Hello, and welcome to the Dissident Mama podcast. Today, I have two guests, Archimandrite Filaret, who is the vice rector of Kiev Theological Academy in the Kiev Caves Lavra. And we also have joining us Father John Whiteford, a priest in the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia, head priest at St. Jonah Orthodox Church in Spring, Texas, and a co-founder of the Ludwell Orthodox Fellowship, along with myself. So welcome, Father Filaret. We are so pleased that you are here to join us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, Rebecca, and Father John. Father John is going to start us with prayer, and then we will get to some questions. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fills all things, treasury of good things, and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us of all impurity and save our souls a good one. Amen. Thank you. So Father Filaret had put out a, uh, a video recently about the tensions rising in the monastery, the theological schools, in response to an impending deadline from um, the Ukrainian government to remove the Ukrainian Orthodox Church from the monastery. The, the UOC, so we may be using that term a lot. That's the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. So I want to ask you about what you described as a tragically difficult situation that is unfolding, and it's about to come to a head. So um, can you tell us uh, a, a bit about what's going on there? And then I also want to ask you about uh, how long you have been at the monastery. Yes, thank you. So first of all, um... I am vice rector, like you noticed, in the academy and seminary of Kiev. And um, I am a young monk because uh, I, ha I am uh, only 32, but I um, studied uh, not only in Kiev, here in seminary and academy, so it's Can you hear him, Father John? Uh, academies and parallel. Yes, sorry. Is it okay? Did he cut out on you, Father John? Uh, he did not mean no. I don't know if. Okay. I, I could hear you clearly. Is it okay? All right. Yeah. Um. Keep going, Father. Yes, sorry. And uh, yes, after I studied uh, in uh, France, in Paris, in um, uh, grade school, École Pratique des Hautes Études, uh, I made um, a master there um, about uh, a um, um, rare, I'd, li I'd say, um, bishop, um, Vigilius uh, of Tapsus, uh, Vigilius Tapsensis, and um, yes, after I returned in Kiev in, in um, 2016, I uh, answered and uh, yes, I received um, um, the name of uh, Filaret of Kiev, uh, Metropol Metropolitan of Kiev. And uh, yes, uh, from 2017, I am uh, 18, sorry. I am vice rector of academy, so it makes uh, like uh, five um, years now. And uh, what ab about um, tragically? Yes, when I um, I have to say before that um, personally, I am not public person, and I um, if, if uh, this situation would not tragically difficult in Ukraine, especially with our church, I would uh, never even write or uh, speak uh, to um, the world because I'm just um, passionate with languages, uh, many languages, uh, like um, I am professor in the Academy of uh, Ancient Greek, Latin, uh, and uh, yes, of course, I uh, speak um, French and other European languages, but uh, it was never been um, like um, um, aim to um, to speak to anyone in the world just to say that I, I know it. But uh, really, this uh, situation is really um, dramatic, dramatically difficult 
because our church, but I think, and my point, um, the least, um, uh, least um, two um, uh, weeks, uh, whenever I speak, it is that it's not only our church suffers, but uh, the orthodoxy in general, uh, because I think that we will clarify it today, but um, uh, yes, first of all, our church, um, our uh, monastery, who, uh, which uh, has really a big um, uh, story uh, uh, since um, um, 11 um, century and um, now when we have um, 2000 uh, monks here um, we have to uh, abandon this monastery just because uh, one representative of uh, government uh, says us to do it and yes, of course, we we disagree with it. Okay, um, so the the monks have been lab laboring there at the Lavra since the eleventh century. Uh, can you tell us before we get into some of the um, details about um, the abandonment of the monastery? What treasures are there? What religious treasures are there? Um, you know. Um, why is it so special? Why should people in the West care about this if they're not Orthodox? Yes, it's um, it's not like an ordinary monastery, even uh, having uh, a big uh, history. Um, but it's um, a um, monastery who has, first of all, uh, more than 100 relics entire. There is no place in the world where there is uh, 120, if I'm not mistaken, uh, relics here uh, from 11th century. And um, it is a proof of our Orthodox faith, even because you know that even in 2014, it was, um, uh, as we say, canonized. Um, a new um, saint. It means that um, our church um, declared this person that it, uh, he is uh, a saint. So we have um, more than 100, 120 uh, saints in uh, there in caves. Uh, so uh, the um, official name of um, our monastery is Laura. Laura is like a uh, way uh, to church, uh, and there is a um, um, big, um, uh, big um, yes, they say that, um, for example, in Union Sovietic, yes, it was uh, like phrase that there is uh, no, um, if there is no in the end of this way church, so this way is nothing so it's not important because uh, in Kiev rules um, always uh, was very important to have a church in 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 um, uh, in all of city and etc but Laura Laura is like um, an official um, official position of um, monastery it means that I this monastery is very important. We have just three um, of Lavras in all uh, part of Ukraine. So in um, east, uh, central, and west, um, three Lavra. And um, yes, the monastery of Lavra is not um, just. Um, yes, we, we even we can say that it uh, it's a castle. If this castle um, uh, won't uh, stay in this moment, uh, it means that we will really um, uh, not be able to uh, sustain, to, uh, to save even our church, because after we have lots of uh, churches and objects in um, uh, uh, ecclesi ecclesiastical objects in um, uh, Ukraine, 
which are like a property of uh, government. So it means that if Laura uh, will not, um, if uh, Laura is not um, sustained, so after it we will have lots of problem. Big, the biggest problem. What I want to do that really for all Orthodoxy churches, not only for our church. Okay, so um, it has to do with uh, maybe a Soviet era lease and uh, a debate over who owns it, right? Um, so maybe Father John, you can take the reins and maybe get into some of that and tell, uh, perhaps discuss who the UOC is, which is Father Filaret and the canonical church and who the OCU is and maybe um, just kind of parse out for Americans, uh, uh, untangle that for us, gentlemen. So, Father, uh, there the um, the uncanonical schismatic church that uh, uh, that is contending for control over the churches in Ukraine was composed essentially of two schismatic groups. Can you talk a little bit about how those groups came into being and the character of the people who are the leaders of those uh, groups? Yes, thanks. Um... So not to uh, begin with uh, even before uh, Soviet Union, because I think that it will be a uh, large uh, history, but mm -hmm. if we, um, it's important um, uh, to say that uh, if we begin with um, um, 1920s, uh, we will have uh, really parallel, uh, two parallel, really very, very, um, important uh, for uh, who can see it or who want to watch and see it. It is, um, uh, if we start with 1920s, it was the same because uh, in Kiev, it was Obnovlenchiskaya um, Tserkov, um, it, it was the church of uh, like new church and I, I like now to clarify just because you know that there is a Ukrainian Orthodox uh, Church which is our and there is Orthodox Church of Ukraine what is a schismatical um, church so um, and it is very um, interesting because if we um, if we hear uh, these narratives of um, uh, new metropolitan epiphany of this uh, new uh, um, uh, church, uh, we will um, listen to really narratives of um, uh, representative of uh, this uh, new church of uh, 100, um, 100 years ago. For example, it was normally to say us before um, war and during the war, but before this um, situation with Laura, uh, it was normally to say that uh, all Slavon um, language, what Slavic language, Slavon, I sorry, I if I uh, miss Slavic, uh, Slavic yes, yeah. English. Slavic um, language is Russian language. So it was narrative of uh, the new church. But now when they understood that um, uh, no one or uh, just one um, little part of uh, uh, monks from our monastery could um, uh, go out from our church to, new ch to a new church, uh, Metropolitan Epiphany started to say that, saying that, uh, oh, um, if there is no problem with Slavic uh, language. It's um, a saint, uh, like a saint uh, language for all of us. Yes, of course, it will be uh, two parallel language, Ukrainian and Slavic. So it's not a difficult. Uh, it's not a difficulty for us, etc. And Father, uh, I, I misunderstood what you were saying earlier, but you're talking about Church Slavonic, which is the liturgical language that the canonical church no. uses. Yes. And so, at right, first yes. they were not going to allow it at all uh, and only use Ukrainian, but now he's saying that they can use both. 
Yes, uh, sorry, yes. Um, you know that it is very difficult when you are really in a situation and you know uh, like many things um, about uh, two or three churches, which I will uh, tell you if it's interesting for you. So yes, um, with languages. So um, normally uh, during Soviet um, uh, Union and um, like um, almost all churches um, celebrated in uh, Slavic language, which is uh, like a language for all um, Euro um, European S Slavic countries like Bulgarian, Serbian, Bulgaria, Serbia, Ukraine, uh, Belarusia, uh, Russia, etc. And um, now the, uh, they tend to separate this language from um, by saying that it is a language of Russia's federation or it, it is very fam familiar to Russia's uh, federation language. So we have to separate this language from Ukraine. Uh, but it's not true because Slavic language is not Russian language, and uh, man, lots of uh, many many historians, scientists, etc., are saying that it's not Russia's um, uh, or Russian language. Um, yes, and um, Metropolitan Epiphany um, is a representative of new church from two. Um, 2018 um, and uh, before it was another church uh, before um, 2018 which is a year when um, uh, Patriarchate Bartholomew of Constantinople united like he as he uh, he's saying it but we all um see here that it's not true um, and uh, before 2018 um, before this unity um, there were um, three orthodox churches uh, in um, after um, uh, collapsed of um, union uh, of soviet um, in um, uh, after even um, 1988, um, so where uh, was a um, sort of freedom for all of churches and a patriarch uh, who uh, call, uh, calls himself like patriarch Hilaret, it's not me, <laughs> by the way, um, Patriarch Hilaret, Metropolitan of um, before Metropolitan of um, Kiev, and uh, one of the most important person of um, um, Russia's uh, Church in uh, during Union Sovietic, uh, he wanted to separate uh, these um, uh, two churches. Uh, before he wanted to be patriarchate of uh, patriarch of um, Russia and uh, like like now a patriarch uh, Kirill, but uh, it wasn't um, the case. And after he decided to separate uh, two uh, churches, uh, Ukrainian um, and uh, calling himself patriarch of. Uh, Ukraine and all Kiev rules. Uh, so because Kiev is uh, in there, in here, in uh, Ukraine and not uh, in Russia, etc., etc. And after uh, parallelly um, um, was another church, autocephaly, Ukrainian church. It was in minority, um, but. Uh, it was also very important because even uh, during um, Union Sovietic, um, they um, were like church. And oh. after the Sirs, um, 
uh, the source or the first, yes, more principle is um, we, sorry, just, um, yes. Um, and we are um, also a church. And after 2018, Patriarch Bartholomew, I, I think that he was uh, played out, I, I'd say, because um, they told him that um, all of um, bishops from our church or uh, at least 50% uh, of uh, our church will uh, go to this um, new church. But mm -hmm. it wasn't the case. Uh, only three bishops um, changed um, our church for new church. And I think that the, the same uh, thing um, are happening in this time with our monastery, because they say that all, or at least uh, fifty percent, can um, um, change. Um, all all of um, monks, yes, can change our church, but it's not the case. Yes. Well, just to clarify a few things. Uh, what you were talking about in the 1920s in English, you would call that group the Living Church, but this was a yes. group that was set up by the Soviets as a rival church, and they had many modernist ideas. They wanted to abbreviate the services, uh, eliminate most of the fast. They wanted bishops to be able to marry. They wanted widowed priests to be able to remarry. All these things are being contrary to the traditions of the church. And they also wanted to introduce the new calendar, and they were pro-communist. But the people of uh, of Russia and Ukraine rejected the, the living church, and so it, it, it mostly lost steam before the 20s were out, and then the last bishop died in 1946, and it ceased to exist. But do you see a parallel? You know, the ecumenical patriarch, of course, has been in a bad situation since World War I. And uh, they do, uh, they're, they're in a difficult situation with the Turkish government. But um, in the 1920s, they recognized the living church and were in communion with them until they kind of withered away. And then everyone tried to pretend that that never happened, but they, they did. Now they're doing the same thing. And uh, do you see this, this new schismatic church? Do you see parallels in terms of their? Uh, approach to the church uh, with the living church in terms of being modernist, uh, pro-homosexual, or things like that? Yes. Um, I can speak about it uh, many, many, um, yes, lots of time even, because um, I notice just two articles about it or about to, to clarify um this question, um, but I think that it was never um, translated in um, English. Uh, so first uh, of all, it's uh, of Father uh, John Meyendorf, who wrote um, and um, later for uh, Ecumenical uh, Constantinople Patriarch uh, to say uh, saying that if you want to be like a center, and if you pretend to be like a primate, primate of um, Orthodox Church, so you uh, have to at least change your center of Constant Constantinople, for example, for New York. I'm not uh, aware if uh, this uh, later was um, translated in English, but I am. Um, I um, even translated it in Ukrainian from uh, French. And the second, to clarify, and after I will speak about um, really in, uh, our days, um, all um, of 100, um, 100 um, years, uh, history repeats not only like political stuff or in church in general, but even uh, by um, wanting to, uh, to um, for example, um, even um, all uh, 125, which is uh, uh, a time to 
um, to uh, tell that uh, it will be the eighth um, country of um, all Orthodox um, ecumenical uh, church. Um, and uh, it never happened. For example, we can um, see um, 1825 or 1823 when a uh, patriarch of um, Alexandria, um, Christophor, Christophorus, um, was telling, um, uh, speaking to uh, patriarch of um, Constantinople or uh, those days, that, uh, sorry, but um, you are on my territory now. The, the problem was that um, many um, priests uh, were sending uh, sent to Africa just uh, to to because uh, like Alexandria uh, the patriarch of Alexandria couldn't send uh, some priest there and he uh, really was um, preoccupied by by this um, um, doing was by, by this um, staffs of uh, Constantinople Patriarch, and he told that that's why we cannot make one ecumenical um, uh, council. And now, if we speak about 100 uh, years ago and today, yes, of course, because this living church uh, was... Um, um, because there were two lines of churches, living and new. For example, in Kiev, it was new church. And uh, in uh, Moscow, it was living, Zhivaya and uh, Novaya. And uh, so uh, here in Kiev, living, uh, new, new church um, was like living in uh, uh, Moscow was um, accepted by patriarch of constantinople it wasn't uh, and we we see it the same uh, here yes and it's very important to understand that when uh, they say that ah you know that uh, church is the new church of ukraine is great is uh, the church of um, uh, love etc uh, we can just uh, say that if you see uh, when um, four churches accepted uh, this new church, just in um, when President Poroshenko, ancient President Porosh uh, of Ukraine Poroshenko, um, uh, could um, influence on uh, another uh, churches. But when uh, President Zelensky, uh, what is actual president, uh, um yes when uh, he uh, started uh, like um, being a president uh, here no one could say that ah yes we accept this church but all of them uh, all of primate, primates um are saying that not it's schismatic we don't understand uh, could you like uh, patriarch of Constantinople, could you demonstrate to us one uh, or two reasons why these people were like um, not priests? All right, it paused on my end. Priests, they are priests. It's not like, sorry, yes. It stopped on my end for a second, but it's fine. Keep going. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. Um, it it can happen. So I don't want to explain like uh, explain like um, more stuff. But uh, here in monastery, we uh, start in, um, we are starting like some something move out from monastery because we don't know if twenty nine um, March. Um, which is uh, after tomorrow, the last day for us, legal day for us. So we started and the stuff like center of uh, internet was uh, moved out too. So sorry if um, really it's me um, or my internet. Yes. So yes, there are lots of 
parallel uh, parallels um, of if we compare yes to to parallel world but i mean i think that it's the same and what what is very strange for me personally it is why like we human don't don't study anything from history like yes or what i i am doing it's a new it's, it's something big it's a something uh, interesting stuff never existed but all of this existed and there are so many errors um we've made so why we don't understand that we can really uh, study something from history i don't understand it yes and i think um, people don't understand uh and i want you to ask your question to father john but the beautification process that when you know people who came before you got the lavra it was in shambles and all the work y'all have done so the lease may seem to be somebody else's but it was just never changed and then on top of that i think americans you know have this very independent spirit and when they hear oh so these folks in ukraine want to be independent well that's a good thing because of exactly what you said they don't understand the history um and and what schismatic really means so father john i want you to ask your question and um maybe just ex uh, explain a little bit more about um you know why the uoc are the people being persecuted and this is a moral human rights injustice so father john ask your question and maybe y'all can get into some of that as well so um when uh, you spoke earlier about uh you know so-called patriarch Filaret of Kiev who had been a metropolitan of Kiev that was under the Russian church but uh he went into schism when he wasn't elected patriarch of Russia because he was he was bitter uh but um he was deposed he was excommunicated he was anathematized each time he appealed to patriarch Bartholomew and Bartholomew affirmed the Russian church's right to make the decision. What do you think changed to make uh, him suddenly decide that these people whom he had recognized as being schismatic, as, that, that now all of a sudden they're okay, and, uh, and, and uh, the bishops ordained by this deposed and anathematized uh, pseudo-patriarch uh, are suddenly real bishops? Oh, it's a big question. Yeah, I'd say just that. Uh, yes, um, important one, but um, yes, I don't know really myself. I don't understand how it is possible just um, uh, not to celebrate liturgy when uh, uh, Patriarch uh, Bartholomew um, of Constantinople arrived in Kiev, for example, 2008, when I was lecturer, uh, I, uh, um, I um, um, read texts uh, during liturgy, so I really, I, um, I know uh, what happened uh, here in Kiev. So, uh, why he didn't celebrate liturgy uh, 2008 and no one from ecumenical church from uh, church of all world um, didn't celebrate with him but now he is metropolitan and more tricky one um, you know that um, for a new church uh, Patriarch Filaret is uh, like father. Uh, it's very interesting because um, he has now um, 94, I think, years or five. And when he had, um, when he was, sorry, uh, a, a 90, uh, so uh, even President Poroshenko gave him like and document that he is the father of um uh, ukraine all ukraine mm -hmm. but now he's serves time abandoned for uh bishops all bishops he ordinated and we have to recognize it 
all bishops uh, or two or three of them are uh, from new church um, for from uh, 2018 but before all of them are um, bishops of uh, patriarch Philaret. so um, yes and it's very interesting because when he uh, patriarch Philaret uh, started or the ordinating sorry ordinating yes uh, like the source branch uh, branch of um, church because uh, there are eight new bishops uh, yes and new the representative of new church deposed all of a eight um bishops but not metropolitan philaret what is the reason what is the idea yes and no one asks, no one asks why. It is very, so I don't, I cannot explain it because I think that they cannot explain it. Do you have any comments on the role of the American government and other Western countries in promoting the schism? Uh, sorry, peace promoting? Promoting, in other words, uh, encouraging the schism to come into existence. Uh -huh. And to oh, be recognized. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm, yes, there is a clear problem uh, in here because if we mm, see, like President Biden, for example, who arrived in Kiev, um, yes, some yes months. I uh, sorry, I can now uh, be. Um, I, I don't now even see time like it was before, you know. But when he arrived in Kiev, he spoke uh, with President Zelensky, which is normal, no problem. But he spoke only with Metropolitan Epiphany. Why? Yes, it's really a question uh, why. And after this, um, uh, I, I wrote... Um, and I uh, spoke uh, to the all of the world, but or no one says me that I can um, I can or we can like publish on our website or th they just say, oh sorry, really we recognize this is a big problem, but you know this is poli policy and etc. So yes, if we say it now that is this is a policy and we don't want to speak about it etc i think that it will be like with the situation with um, war with the war in ukraine we don't want to speak so it will be uh, better after in future when if we don't um, decide really function doing something uh, acting like uh, really a Christian uh, church after we, we will have lots of problem in all of the world because we can uh, really um, uh, we can even um, how I'd um, say it uh, we can even uh, not have a church, Christian church, with the same values as we have or as uh, Christ uh, preached, yes? So it's really very important to say now that it is schismatic um, church. This is policy, yes, politics, stuff, etc. And this is what we have to do. And yes, the government of America, unfortunately, uh, yes, I cannot uh, say it for, um, yes, uh, firmly, but uh, unfortunately, what I see here um, helps to new church to uh, drive, to dry uh, uh, us out, even from Ukraine in general. But what I don't understand, that they ignore at least two uh, millions um, of believers who really are in the church, our churches 
all um, Sundays. So it's not like, oh, the race, for example, Greco Greco Catholic, yes, like Uniat, um, which is um, um, part of uh, Catholic um, Church here, they have like yes, two uh, millions of believers, but in all of the world. For example, it's not more than uh, 300 uh, believers in Ukraine, uh, active uh, uh, believers. So it's not the same, yes? And they say us uh, that, oh, you are in minority. There is a public opinion that you uh, cannot exist because you are Russian. Like, Christ says that being Russian, being Ukraine, it's more important than being a Christian. Right. I don't understand it yet. Can you talk about uh, how the persecution of yeah. the canonical church in Ukraine has increased since uh, the ecumenical patriarch recognized the schismatic group and also whether... Patriarch Bartholomew has spoken out against any of these persecutions uh, in the past or more recently in, in conjunction with the threats against the Lavra. Can I say one thing, too, before you answer? Yes. Yes. I want you to know that a lot of people in the West believe the narrative that there is no persecution. So please um, tell us from the ground what has been going on there, because I think that is something that will change hopefully some people's hearts and minds, um, just tell us what's been going on there because that's part of the narrative. Yes, speaking of history, I hope, but you know that we um, seen all of this stuff that I uh, spoke um, in uh, here and what we will speak um, today uh, about. Uh, so I I fear that really we will have a uh, 30, uh, 37th year when priests was killed only by being Christian, by being priests. I, I hope that it will, it won't be. And like... Just, just uh, to clarify what your point is, uh, you're talking about in, in 1937 was a particularly brutal year where they were just taking priests and, and putting them in front of firing squads <laughs> and shooting them, uh, you know, by by the hundreds, thousands, uh, you know, you know, and uh, and not to mention monks and nuns and laymen. Yes, exactly uh, what I'm saying because um, there are lots of martyrs. What is which is very good because even. Uh, first uh, Christian were saying that um, the blood is um, something very important. Yes, it was um, the, the seed of the church. Yes, seeds, but was even before Tertullian was um, other Christian what saying were saying lots of stuff like that. That it's very important for church, but um, is it necessary? Really, in a democratic uh, world uh, of um, uh, today, as modern, uh, to to kill, uh, to pe to kill people, to kill priests, only because they uh, are praying, only because they are Christians. If we really, if we we will we um, uh, are saying that oh yes you have to kill this uh, representative of uh, of uh, new church or something like that okay i am i am uh, i agree with it that it's not um, uh, it's it cannot even be uh, but uh, if we um, are really in we we pr propagate this democracy, which I'm doubt. Uh, yes, I doubt a lot in Ukraine, um, especially. So yes, we will have the same in um, uh, not uh, thirty sevens, but it can be twenty five or twenty four, for example. 
2020 or 25. Um, so, um, yes, and uh, yes, they are telling even uh, the representative of these new churches that, oh no, there is no perse uh, persecution um, in Ukraine. Uh, it's just um, uh, Russian uh, world who, uh, which uh, has to be um, drived out, etc., etc. So, but we, yes, of course, we cannot say that a government killed one of our priests. Not now. Yes, we. I have uh, to confirm it, but. Um, persecutions can be not only by killing, but even um, in some case, in some reason, even more difficult when psychologically they are saying, for example, yes, just one um, to clarify it, um, we have case, like I um, said it before, and um, the government, the representative of uh, government, uh, said that um, from today, uh, I think that it was 20th, uh, March 20, uh, uh, today, from today, uh, the um, believers will not be able to enter uh, the caves. And uh, after lots, uh, many, many believers, many uh, people um, arrived, to pray, and they understood that it cannot be um, before 20, at least 20, 29 March, because really lots of people can say that, oh, what is this? I arrived, I, for example, um, been um, 80, for example, or 60 years old, I cannot enter in the caves. Why? It, why did you didn't even uh, uh, preview us uh, why I cannot enter today, etc. So, but I think that it is um, a psychological um, position uh, to um, influence our believers and mm -hmm. yes, why, why I am human too, no? So, uh, yes, even uh, on us to influence on us, on uh, our um, uh, monks, because um, I um, really, I run like a little boy when I uh, um, listened uh, that uh, only for 15 minutes uh, caves where um, uh, is my uh, patron, uh, Filaret of Kiev, uh, these caves will be uh, open just for 15 minutes. I run like a little boy because I um, didn't know if ever I can, I could enter and uh, pray uh, for my uh, patron, etc. So yes, this is stuff like really persecutions, not by killing, but yes, doing these things. Well, most of the persecution, from what I understand, it's not so much that the government sends soldiers to, to close a church or to beat up a priest. It's usually been in the past that uh, they allow mobs to enter a church, beat the priest up, take the church over, give it over to the schismatics. Usually they don't have any people who actually want to attend that church once, once it's with the schismatics, so they just lock the churches up. But uh, but there have been priests that have been killed, and um, and how many churches uh, do you, are you aware of roughly that have been stolen from the canonical church since uh, uh, 2018? This is exact um, word stolen, not um, they they tell us that. Uh, it was um, um, freely uh, choice of uh, all of these churches. But if we really see, uh, there are lots tons of um, videos when really um, the uh, 
believers, if I can uh, call them, believers of new church arrived and just by force uh, they uh, took, stole this church. And what is more interesting, after they take this church, they don't enter this church. They uh, just um, close this church and don't even pray in it. For example, not, not to speak about all of, uh, yes, you. Um, I think that it's uh, around um, um, million, uh, sorry, uh, thousand, thousand um, uh, parishes um, which was were uh, stolen in these days. Uh, and um, just one uh, example, uh, and uh, I, um, um, by thinking about it, I um, uh, clarified in my uh, head one um, image. Uh, I can, um, yes, I can tell. Uh, I see the new church like a dragon who with his, its tail, destroy all um, uh, behind um, him by just by seeing something very beautiful like beautiful things what i mean for example um, on um, december uh, 2022 um, government uh, gave um, uh, the um, two most, um, yes, the biggest church of Laura, of monastery. So it's the Cathedral of Dermission and the church of, um, um, sorry, I don't know how to say trapezny. Um, the refractory. The refractory, yes, yeah. thank you. Um, so, um, uh, because historically, uh, uh, monks uh, after the liturgy could uh, even uh, eat in uh, this um, in this church, so that's why refectory. So, but uh, the representative of this church um, celebrated only four liturgy in three months from uh, December from January. Um, it's very strange. Why? Because in in the same time, we you can um, say, maybe I can uh, send to Rebecca if um, it can, it's possible, we could uh, even uh, make it uh, um, in um, uh, descriptions on uh, YouTube, for example, some just some videos um, of our believers who uh, are praying just um, on the way uh, before before a church before our um, uh, church um, um, next to caves and there are like um, tens uh, of thousands and there in the same time there in the church and it is uh, proved and they don't refuse it, uh, there are only believers from all of Ukraine. It, uh, I think that you uh, agree with me um, that it is not normal to go to another church uh, for um, uh, Christmas, for Christmas, Christmas, like it's family, no, for uh, it's a um, uh, feast for a family, not for uh, five um, five hundred kilometers to go to the church. No, and they are um, they arrived just before because I think government or these uh, representatives of a church said to do it, and uh, even four or five. Um, uh, bus uh, were uh, next to Laura. Um, they um, really uh, arrived um, because of these believers, and these believers uh, prayed in uh, these 
uh, church. But after, why, if you are, I, uh, I am, I say to uh, re uh, representatives of this new church, if you are really a church of um, love, etc., and Christian values, why don't you celebrate liturgy every single day? Because you um, registered a monastery on our territory of Kiopechersk Laura of this monastery, but there are there are no monks here. Why it, it is? Is it really uh, Christian values you preach? To clarify what, what you're talking about, the the uh, church the Church of the Dormition that was given to the schismatics by the government. To fill the congregation, they had to bus people from Western Ukraine mostly uh, because they have no support in, in, among the local people, and it would have been an empty church. And that's the reason why they've only had three liturgies since December in all this time. And what Father Filaret is pointing out is that they registered a supposed monastery of their own as being the monastery of the Kiev Caves. But if they had any real monks, they would be doing daily liturgies because that's what monasteries do, and they're not. So clearly, it's all fake. But uh, Father, I wonder if you could, because uh, I know we're getting close to the hour mark. But if you could talk about what will happen when the government tries to expel the monks and the seminary if nothing is done to stop this from happening, what what do you think will be the results? Um, first of all, it will be difficult for ourselves, for a monastery and academy and seminary, because um, um, because um, um, actually, as I know, in Europe, for example, when um, uh, the country or the government of the country uh, decided to give uh, um some church for uh um, of time of soviet union uh, yes uh, they uh done it but if they couldn't do it they uh, propose an another place like some restitution some um alternative it is not in our case just they say that 29 March you cannot be uh, in the monastery and it is uh, what, your uh, problem uh, to go when whenever you want but it's not our problem and after there are lots of problems with um, a museum, for example, because even representatives of the museum uh, are saying that uh, actually we cannot sustain this monastery because we have to have uh, more than 200 um, people to, to, uh, to, to make it function in general. And after, uh, I don't think that um, the government can pay our uh, the monastery for uh, representatives of new church if they are here, which I doubt that it it can be the same. Why? Because, for example, they um, according to their statistics, they have not more than two hundred fifty monks which is exactly as our, exa exactly the amount of our uh, count of uh, monks just in one monastery. And they uh, have it in all of Ukraine. We have more than 4,000 um, monks, yes, women and um, men, but uh, the point is that much more than just 250. So, uh, yes, it will be a big problem, but even 
or government, it will be a problem. Why? Because they, when they uh, dry us out, uh, if they let uh, to enter uh, these representatives of this uh, new church, uh, they cannot even demonstrate that what this decision was right, even for a government, because they cannot sustain, first of all, like uh, just for image that, oh, you, you know that there are so many believers. Okay, they can um, make it just for three, four uh, uh, liturgy, like it was, like I, I, I told before, but uh, it won't be uh, eternal process to to make uh, just people arrive in Kiev um, Pechersk uh, Laura because we are not Muslims. We are not uh, that uh, for uh, to save our uh, to save our um, uh, soul. We have to arrive in Laura Kiev Pechersk etc etc. So I I. I don't know that it can um, be right mm, neither for um, government or for um, church, new church itself. Do you think, I understand that the monks are not planning on cooperating with leaving. Do you think that violence and maybe even some monks being killed are likely to happen? if the government goes ahead with their plans? Sincerely, I don't know. We don't know. And I think that even uh, in the government don't know how it will be going. They hope that we will just go out, but it won't happen. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure because there are uh, so many believers even who uh, want to arrive in the monastery, uh, in any case. It means that even if uh, Metropolitan Onufri, uh, primate of our church, of uh, bishops, or if uh, even monks uh, go out, they won't, because it is uh, the heart of our church. It's not, like I said, it's not like an ordinary uh, monastery. So, yes, it could be everything but i don't know if um, there will be uh, like soldiers um in in here or just uh, they will uh, tell that uh, it's not um, according to law uh, law to to be here and etc i don't know i have a, a question <clears throat> so there have been deaths you know, outside of the monastery, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people dying in Donbass, protesters outside of your monastery chanting things like suitcase, train station, Russia, you know, there's angst coming at you, stolen churches, all the things you've talked about, even if everybody at the monastery was to leave peacefully, not saying a word, I think there would still be problems once you all left the property. So, I, I'm praying for y'all. I want to know what we can do to help you all and what your appeal is to the American people, especially Orthodox Christians who live here. What can we do for you? Yes. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank you uh, because um, you um, and your uh, colleagues are um, the first who replied uh, to my um, video, to our video and to our appeal for, of, of uh, our rector and my um, videos. So really thank you because in um, this world who, which names uh, calls um, really democratic, but after we see that it's not the case, it's really um, already big uh, things you you've done um all of you who um, uh, are listeners uh, of our um, podcast of this podcast and uh, you watch us uh, i'd um, yes i'd like um, to say 
usage i am available uh, to to speak with uh, all of you or um to i will um kindly um, reply uh, yes to all of your questions necessary just to clarify our situation because if you um think that we uh, propagate uh whatever uh world uh, which is not christian world you um, you are mistaken because it is not the case and yes uh, we have um um we have um, our website um ac academy and seminary and uh, yes one more time i will ask rebecca maybe to it if it's possible to make it below uh, this video so uh, i um, uh, made um, uh, appeals uh, on um, four languages italian uh, french uh, Spanish and English, and uh, they are available for you, and you can uh, spread it, and it will um, it will uh, help us a lot. But first of all, and the most important, I'd like to um, I'd like to ask you to pray, really sincerely to pray for us because like i said it's not only persecutions or if you want dramatical um uh, situation for our church but for all of christians because after us they will go to make the same in all of your home in your i mean church not by home like property but in your church which is uh, always like a house like a home for us no not only um we don't afraid about uh, about uh, the um, structures of church because uh, it's uh, we can we can um redo, redo it uh, one more time but um if we um don't have faith really faith in jesus christ it won't be even i'm not i don't uh fear to to say even that our world will not sustain without our faith without our christian faith yes and what uh do you have any parting words um Father John for Father Philaret. Well, we are praying for you. And uh, I've been encouraging people to contact their representatives and to let them know that we don't appreciate our government supporting uh, the destruction of our church in Ukraine. And they're doing it in more ways than one. Our government largely funds the government in Ukraine. So I don't think that the Ukrainian government does very much that we don't want them to. And they're doing this. And so if everybody who hears this could uh, pick up your phone and start contacting your representatives, you're, you're, you've got two senators in every state and you've got a, 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 a congressman, a representative that represents you, contact them and let them know and, uh, and, and make sure you drive home what an urgent situation this is because it's quite likely that if that this goes forward, that uh, on Wednesday, that there will be people who will be dead on Thursday that will have died needlessly and uh, and, and uh, as innocent victims of this repression. And, and we're told all the time that the Ukrainian government is standing for freedom and democracy, mm -hmm. and yet they are persecuting the largest uh, religious group in Ukraine. And uh, so we need to ask that, that our representatives not make us parties to this by using our tax dollars to support this. Yes, and I think Father Filaret has made that case here uh, for um, who was in the right and who was in the wrong. And then the video that you originally put out that I first saw you does a splendid job of that. So of course I will put that in. And I think your point is this is important to all Christians because it may come 
to Americans um, who are Orthodox as well, too, or maybe to even more Christians beyond Orthodoxy. So this is the time to stand up. And I am so glad that you have done that, Father Filaret, as a person who says, you know, you wouldn't normally have done something like this, but I think this situation calls for such bravery. So thank you for being so brave and God bless you. Thank you, Father John and Rebecca, one more time having me here. And yes, um, thank you for your prayers, especially for your prayers. All right, Father Filaret, uh, God bless you. Please tell um, uh, everyone in the monastery that there are indeed people praying for them and we will pray mightily. And thank you, Father John, for being here. I think it was a very um, fruitful conversation that I'm going to get out as soon as possible since the deadline is looming. Uh, God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you.